Tell me about your family or how did you become involved in it? Well, uh, there was my father and my father had uh, four brothers. Um, one of them was a stone mason, which was the uh, three of the, uh, my grandfather and grand uncles and that, they were stone masons. Oh, but uh, at that time they were big families, but there was Mosey and Alec and James and my father and Robert and they farmed and uh, the farm be taken land, you know, renting mm. one acre and they would have grown a hundred acres of, of uh, mostly oats corn at that time. It was the most popular crop. Right. They were taking land down near Castle Banach, Yanville, down there, and can anywhere they could get land. My father was a was a uh, ploughman. Right. That's what he did. He ploughed and he ploughed that on the acres every year for years and years. And uh, Uncle Mosey, then he got a horse and tractor, and then he used to make ready after the. My father ploughed, but then we come to springtime, he had a, the tractor and the dust, and he made ready to, to prepare it for sowing. The green potatoes as well, and uh, then my father would have, you know, grubbed and moulded and worked through potatoes in the summertime, and that kind of work. And uh, so they were still doing that and growing potatoes, it was part of the thing that we did. And uh, so I just sort of continued on with the growing potatoes and started to keep pigs and sort of thing like that. <laughs> we didn't have much land at the time, but uh, we cut some land and you know what? And you started? Some land left from Uncle Jim. Right. And then we bought a farm from Uncle Robert. And uh, on my mother's side. My mother's people was village farmers as well. Right. There was a big family of them as well. There was six, six boys and two girls in that family. And uh, my uncle Jackie and uncle Charlie bought a thrashing mill between them the way back, I suppose. But Sometime before the Second World War. A, a mobile one? Or like aye, mobile one. Right? Aye, a tractor. <coughs> and then they went on to, to have, uh, they had a mill each, both of them had mills then. Then Uncle Charlie, he, uh, he emigrated over to England in, <coughs> in the early 1950s. My Uncle Jack, he bought the other mill from him, so he ran the two mills in for a good number of years until the combines took over. And is it is it all just potatoes that you grow, or is it at the moment? No, it's mostly cereals I grow. Mostly cereals. I, I grow wheat, uh, oats, and barley. Some potatoes. Um, I don't uh, grow as many potatoes now as we used to. Uh, but I don't have the help. But tillage in this area goes back a long, long time. Hmm. The ground, the land here is, is suitable for tillage. Um, and most of it is suitable in this East Donegal here, around this mm -hmm. around our four area. And um, apparently whenever the early settlers come here, maybe five to six thousand years ago, they were farmers. Apparently they, whenever they came, they brought seeds with them and uh, started to grow clear land and grow crops on it. But then, I think back in the Middle Ages there, they would have been, the farmer would have tended to move over towards cattle yeah. growing that time. Yeah. Cattle were wealth apparently at that time, and the oh, system changed. The chieftains and all yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. The that, wealth was it, measured by the amount of cattle. That's right, that. that's how you were measured, the amount of cattle you had. <laughs> <coughs> I suppose it's well drained too, isn't it, by all the rivers? Most, oh, it is, uh, it is. 
It is, and a good bit of it's fairly free draining as well. Although there was a lot of work done to make more marginal land more yeah. suitable for tillage as well. That area from an earlier post going down to Derry there, what was termed years ago as a Lagan Valley, mm. that's sort of the, the tillage yeah, area of Donegal, mm. mostly. You'd have someone on the show in there too, but uh, not to the same extent as what it would be mm. in all yeah. And see, when you were a young fellow working for, for your father, I remember you telling me stories before, you know, about you know all the people that he would have got the help. And uh, you were chatting about the range earlier. And mm. Oh, that's right. Uh, I mean, what do you remember about that? Was it a big? Was there a lot of people working at the time with you? All or? there was, uh, all there was, surely. Uh, uh, that was uh, the farm at that time was very labour intensive. Yeah. Anything you had to do was, uh, you know, that just took help to do it. Whether you're reaping corn and tying it in sheaves, or whether you're binding it, it had to be stooped and it had to be. Carried it on and built in stacks and then had to be thrashed and all this working on, you know. But it is the same. Um, well, tell me, about the, tell me about the potatoes, like what's the process there? Well, that time, but it would have been, uh, when we gathered and picked by hand, mm. dug with, uh, remember my father used to dig with uh, horses and a uh, horse digger. And there would have been anything up to fifteen or twenty together, you know. But uh, it was hard work. But you know, they're always when there's a big group of people together, they get there always. Uh, it was a bit of fun. I must have been some crack. You know, it was just crack, right? No, uh, it helped the uh, the uh, sort of dull the pain a bit of that was sore work. <laughs> I'd say they were long days. Ah, indeed, uh, long days, surely, when the weather was suitable, right? And what's the big change now? <clears throat> like, what's the big difference? Well, the big difference now is uh, most farm houses uh, run single handed, or very few farms employ labour anymore because it's not really economical to, mm. to, to, uh, to employ labour. You need to be in a very big way to, to cover yeah, the extra yeah, yeah. cost of having the number uh, Well, the result has become a very lonely occupation in most cases. You know? Yeah. It's a uh, um, high percentage of, of uh, depression and stuff that among farmers at the present time. If you're under stress and under suffering from loneliness and, mm. you know, just somebody to talk to or to be there, you know. And do you still chat to the, the other farmers around you? I mean, do you always support yeah. from them? Oh, we do, surely, yeah. That's right. Oh, I do. That's why the, the, the local marts, you know, they get, uh, people tend to go to the marts whether, you know, whether they're doing any business at the marts or not. Mm -hmm. they, they go anyway and, the, you know, they meet and they socialise sort of there. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's easier knowing everyone's in the same boat. That's right, uh, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm.